All right, in this video, I want to do a couple of examples where I take an autonomous system of differential equations and I find the critical points for that system, then sketch the direction field in the phase plane, and then use that information to determine whether those critical points are stable or unstable. So first of all, what do I mean by an autonomous system? Well, I mean that the independent variable, which in this case is t, doesn't appear anywhere on the right side of these equations. So you can see over here we have dx of dt is equal to negative x. There's no t here on the right side. Again, here in this second equation, dy dt equals negative 2y, uh, no t over there. So this is an autonomous system of equations. Um, we're going to first find the critical points for this. Now, a critical point, by a critical point, we mean a, a point where each of these functions here, these functions of t, um, are equal to 0. So here, this uh, negative x be equal to zero. So let's let's just set that equal to zero. Set both of these equal to zero. And then solve that that system of equations to determine at what points um, are both of these equal to zero uh, simultaneously. Well we can see that the only place where both of these are going to be equal to zero is in if both x and y are equal to zero. So our critical point is going to be at the origin, at 0, 0. All right, so now let's graph what happens around that critical point. So here's our critical point, and let's take some points near that critical point and, um, and draw the, the trajectories at, uh, at those various points. So here, let's take the point uh, uh, 1, 0, and the point 0, 1, and we'll go down here to negative, uh, or 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, and then also these corner points here at uh, 1, 1, 1, etc. All right, so, and what I want to do is find um, the slope at each of those points and then what direction the the, the solution is flowing. Uh, all right, so uh, at the point, let's start here at 1, 0. If x is 1 and y is 0, if we plug that in up here, we're going to get that the change in x, x prime, is going to be equal to uh, negative 1, right? And then the change in y, if y is 0, if we plug in 0 here, we get that the, that the change in y is going to be 0. And so then the slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x, which in this case is going to be 0. So right here at this point, our slope is 0. Now, which direction is it, is it going? Well, if the change... Uh, in x, if the if the derivative of x with respect to t is negative, then it's going to the left. If it's positive, it's going to the right. Uh, with y, the change in y, if it's positive, it's going up. If it's negative, it's going down. So here, the change in x is negative. So this is going to the left. So there's there's one of our one of our arrows in our direction field. All right, now let's. Just work our way uh, counterclockwise here. So if they're both one, well, if uh, if x is one, then uh, the derivative of x is going to be negative one. And if y is one, then y prime is negative two. So the slope, the change in y over the change in x is going to be two. So we're going to have a slope of two here. And now which direction is it going? Well, both the, the x is negative, the change in x is negative, so it's going to the left. Change in y is negative, so it's going down. So it's going down and to the left. So it's going this way. All right, now for, uh, for the point 0, 1. All right, well, x is 0, so the change in x is 0. Y 
is 1, so change in y is negative 2. Change in y over the change in x is negative 2 over 0. That's a problem. So uh, you can see that where, uh, where x is equal to 0, we're not going to have a trajectory. There's, it's just not going to exist there on the y-axis here. So, uh, so we won't draw a, uh, an arrow there. Let's go over here to negative uh, 1, 1. Plug in negative 1 for x, we get 1 here. This is going to be negative 2. So our slope is negative 2. We'll draw our slope there. It's going to the right and down. So draw our arrow like that. Here uh, at the point negative 1, 0, well, we can see that uh, if we plug in 0 for y, um, this whole thing is going to be 0. So our slope is 0. Let's, let's go ahead and, and write this in. This was the point negative 1, 0. So this was 1 and 0. Slope is 0. It's going to the right because the change in x is positive. All right. And then a uh, couple more. This one, uh, negative 1, negative 1. This is going to be 1 and 2. So our slope will be 2. So we've got a slope that looks like that. And it's going up and to the right. So our arrow looks like that. And then down here, uh, the point 1, negative 1, we're going to get uh, negative 1 and positive 2. And that's going to give us a slope of negative 2, which looks like that. And it's going to the left and up. So our arrow looks like that. All right. Now, um, obviously, this gets tedious to do too much of this. So in future examples, we're just going to turn to a computer and let it uh, find our direction field for us. Um, but you can see that with all of these, with all of these uh, uh, trajectories here, they're all they're all bringing us to our to our uh, critical point. So our critical point here, if you can imagine, it, if you're on that critical point, obviously you're uh, you're not going anywhere. You're there's no arrow with, at the critical point. You're just stuck there. But what would it, what would happen if you moved off of that critical point just a little bit? That's what's going to determine whether it's stable or unstable. So here, if you moved a little ways off of this, well, it doesn't matter which direction you move, those trajectories are going to bring you right back down. Um, I, I think of this as, as like having a, a, a hole in golf at the, at the bottom of a, of a bowl, where no, even if you miss by a little bit, the the slope is just going to bring you right back down to the to the hole. You see those kinds of holes in in miniature golf, where you can you can miss by quite a bit, and it's still everything's going to just funnel down into the hole. That's going to be a stable point. In fact, this is going to be called um, asymptotically stable. So we have this point where all the trajectories are going toward the critical point, we're going to call that asymptotically stable. So that's example number one. All right, example two. We've got uh, dx dt equals 2x plus y plus 3, and dx, dy dt equals negative 3x minus 2y minus 4. So to find the critical points for this, we're going to set each of these functions this function here and this function here equal to zero, and then figure out what for what values of x and y uh, are both of these going to be equal to zero. So we've got uh, 2x plus y plus 3 is equal to zero, and negative 3x minus 2y minus 4 equals zero. All right, now to solve this system, um, let's multiply this top equation by 2 and add it to the bottom. That will, that will give us 2y minus 2y. The y's will add to 0 and we'll be left with the x's. So 2 times 2x is 4x minus 3x is x. Um, 2 times 3 is 6 
minus 4 is 2. So x plus 2 is 0, so x equals negative 2. If we plug in negative 2 up here, we get negative 4 minus 3 is negative 1. So y minus 1 equals 0. So y is 1. And so our critical point is going to be at the point negative 2, 1. All right, now let's go to the computer and sketch our direction field. All right, there are a number of phase plane plotters that you can find on the internet. I'm going to use this one that's on the University of Arkansas's website. Um, so we're going to first enter x prime, which is was equal to 2 times x plus y plus 3. And then y prime was negative 3 times x minus 2 times y minus 4. And let's go ahead and graph that phase plane. And there you can see that very quickly we get um, we get a graph of this phase plane. And uh, what we're looking for is our critical point, which we determined earlier was going to be at the point negative 2, 1. So if we go out to negative 2 right here and then up to 1, here's our critical point right here. And if we graph right around that point, if we, if we just um, look at what happens if you've got a, something right in around that point, uh, what happens to it? And so we're going to graph a bunch of these different solutions starting at different places uh, right around that, uh, that critical point. And you can see that what's happening here is that we've got some arrows kind of pointing toward the um, toward the critical point and some pointing uh, exactly away from the critical point. But you can see that what, what's, what we've got here is what we call a saddle point. And you can see that um, if you can imagine again a, a hole on a, on a green on a golf course. And if, if, you had, if you had that hole at the bottom of a trough like we did before, all of the, all of the trajectories are, heading, are bringing that ball right down to the hole. If you had it on the top of a, of a mound, then even if you miss the hole just by a little bit, then that ball is going to run off the green, right? Here you can see what happens if you if you were to if you were to putt toward the hole, um, it's going to it's going to kind of fall off. If you can imagine that being right at the center of a saddle that uh, that slopes up on uh, to two sides and and down to the other sides. Um, you can see that that if you if you miss by just a little bit, it's going to kind of fall off to the side. Um, it's it's only on one particular line that uh, that you'd be able to to putt straight down and hit the hole, and uh, and it would go in. But but everywhere else, everything is bringing uh, all of these trajectories, all of these solutions are are running away from the away from the center point. So this is going to be an unstable critical point. Um, and, uh, and, and this, uh, this particular type of unstable critical point is called a saddle point.